Hi, I'm Andy Halsman. I work at Family Tree Counseling Associates. I can be reached at 317-457-8668 or ahalsman2 at comcast.net. Calling this video, Get Off the Relationship Treadmill of Traumatized Love. So when you fall in love, of course, you, it's many ways it's out of your conscious control. We, the issue here, though, is a lot of times we fall in love over and over again with the same type of person. And if that similar type of partner is someone who's destructive to us, it's destructive to our well-being, to our safety, to our life in many ways, then that's what I'm thinking of as the treadmill of traumatized love. Now, a lot of this has to do with who we are and, and how we've grown up and our family of origin. And a lot of times at Family Tree, we're talking about the family of origin. And family of origin just means our parents, our grandparents, our, the patterns that we've learned in our life to, that we formed that make us who we are. I'm in a relationship, I'm married, I've been married for 35 plus years. My children, they're grown, they're out of the house. My wife and I still have our family of origin issues that sometimes get in the way of harmony because we handle things differently, we see things differently. People can be competitive, they can be feeling like they're not being validated or feeling like they're being controlled or they have trust issues. Everyone has issues and everyone has a way that they've been trained or that they've grown in their life. But if you're in relationships that repeat over and over again, and I hear these kind of relationships often in my work. So there's the attraction, there's the initial attraction. The people fall in love, the partners fall in love. They live together, children are born, the couple splits, then another person is brought in and the pattern repeats itself over and over again. So if that's happening in your life, if you're attracted to folks who just hurt you or you're hurting them and you feel shame because you're causing pain in this relationship, but more, more often than not, someone is, is blaming the other person and feeling like that person is just somehow destructive to them. And yet, if you don't look at what your pattern is and who you're attracted to, as trite as it sounds, we're attracted to who we're attracted to. That's If, if there are certain types of per people who you're attracted to, then that's just going to be who you're attracted to and who you're going to uh, form a relationship with. I hear these descriptions kind of often where a woman is attracted to someone who's uh, a musician or an artist, he's cool, he's beautiful, he's fun, he's a rebel. Or a, a man will find somebody who's beautiful, sexy, independent, caring, supportive. Those are wonderful characteristics, of course, both of, all of those characteristics. The problem is if you are just looking at the external characteristics, the fun time, and there's not much else in the relationship, if there's not a level of maturity and safety in the relationship, not a, an ability to be intimate, then this relationship treadmill will continue for you because you will not be satisfied. You will not have intimacy in that relationship. You will blow it. And so this, depending on how um, aware you are of what's going on with yourself and aware of who you're going to bring into your life, then your relationships may be doomed. So you can have relationships with just about anyone. You can be attracted to just about anyone. If someone reminds you of a parent or is the opposite of your parent or if you know certain characteristics turn you on or exciting for you, though, that's fine. So we're just kind of looking at what do you do when you're attracted to someone over and over again and if you're in this kind of relationship and you find yourself to be shaming or overly critical or scared to challenge that person or you're feeling um, non-trusted or untrusted because the person is always accusing you of cheating or they can't let you out of their sight 
you have no ability to grow, you're not allowed to be with your friends. Conversely, if someone is so closed off, so self-involved, so narcissistic or emotionally vacant that there's hardly any relationship at all, that's problematic. These are all issues that have to do with family patterns, trust, safety, um, addictions, abuse. This, these are things to look at in terms of the person who you're with. Not that you can't have a relationship with that type of person. It's just a matter of if you're going to be in a relationship with that type of person because it feels comfortable for you, then be aware that those issues will come up and those feelings will come up. So in counseling and therapy, what we're really talking about is, okay, if that's who you are and that's who you're attracted to, there's no set answer to say you can't be with that person. It's just a matter of to kind of find yourself, to find who you are and how you can talk about this. So if you're shaming the person, that's not going to work. If you're being victimized by the person, that's not going to work. So what are the words? What's the pattern? What's the way that you can talk about what's going on with you if you're going to be in this relationship? So you don't continue on that treadmill because you'll break up with this person and then, or have a child with this person, break up with this person, and then find somebody else to bring into your life who's exactly the same. And that just doesn't work over and over and over again. There are plenty of folks I deal with who've been married multiple times or have been in multiple relationships. And that's discouraging and dissatisfying. So therapy is about working through this type of these type of feelings that you have and these intimacies to find intimacy in the relationship it doesn't mean that you have to stay with a person if it's a destructive abusive relationship of course not and that's part of therapy too is it's all about finding yourself finding what you can handle how you can what you can do with it but before you make those big choices of stay or go to do the best you can do to be present in the relationship so if you're laying in bed at night and you're feeling emotionally distant from your partner or you're feeling engulfed and overwhelmed by your partner and these feelings come up and if you uh, if you say nothing and you wait for that person to come to you, you're going to be waiting an awfully long time. If you shame them, attack them, criticize them, that's not going to help the relationship either. So what's the other choice? There are other choices here. The other choices are to be able to trust enough, which is of course big, to talk about what you're going through, what you're feeling, to be to do it in an appropriate way, to say what's going on with you, and to be direct and clear about your feelings. That's easy to say, very hard to do for most people. That is not the pattern that most people in a traumatized or dysfunctional or even a relatively normal family is is not an easy thing to do it's just not talked about direct feelings and so that's part of kind of the a, a way to get out of these destructive patterns because you only are going to do what you know how to do and you're only going to do that because you learned it in what seems normal to you, even if your family was messed up, even if your family was destructive or abusive or addicted, you're still were a kid and you learned how to be in that family. And so if you have the insight and the ability to be working on yourself in therapy, then you can be at least a little aware of these patterns and eventually be able to talk about what's going on with you so you can do it in the best way possible if you're in that kind of, rela if you're in a re any relationship, any relationship at all. Like I said, I'm in a relationship as well and I have to, my wife has good boundaries and my feelings come up and I have to deal with her, my feelings and she has to deal with her feelings. And I, it's not always easy. It's just, we're committed to it and we're working it out and working it through and we're gonna be committed to it and we're gonna stay in the relationship. It's just, sometimes it's work. Sometimes it, it brings up strong feelings because we're different people. And so 
whoever you're attracted to, if you're in that relationship and you want to make it work, give us a call, Family Tree. My name, again, is Andy Holzman, 317-457-8668, aholzman2 at comcast.net. I realize this is just a, a small smattering of working through how you, if you're in a relationship that's going nowhere to work it out, but that's what, again, what counseling is about. Thank you so much. Bye.